G'day, George Truman's here. Just uh, another one of our drought case studies that we've been doing across the region, um, catching up with landholders that have implemented different strategies to manage their livestock or their farming systems um, to, uh, to better accommodate for drought. So I'm just here with Mark Kesby, just uh, outside of Gunnedah. Mark's uh, got a, a water telemetry system that he's installed. And uh, it's certainly uh, been very popular um, as a way of, one, monitoring um, water in terms of its um, uh, saving so that you're, you're not wasting water. I guess, you know, we've had a lot of issues with bores being depleted during the dry. So water is so valuable. So having tanks and troughs running over um, is only going to waste water that, uh, you know, that we're not, uh, we're not getting the recharge and the regeneration of. So. Um, so having that telemetry, being able to monitor the water um, to avoid any of those leakages is a really important um, way to better manage your resources and it's also going to help with um, your managing your livestock system. So, so Mark, what's been your, um, um, your, I guess, what's instigated um, installing the, the water telemetry and what have been some of the, the lessons or the, the challenges with it? Okay, so I'll, I'll take you back to the start. We, we used to have a a single bore on a windmill which was would only water 60 head of cattle if it if the if it blew and apart from that we were on dams now over since it's got drier dams have become less and less reliable especially as we've increased our ground cover to the point where for the last five years most of our dams have been dry so if we if we'd been relying on them the whole system would have broken down and if you're chasing water around your farm rather than being able to graze the paddocks as you wish, water determines where you can graze and that's just a recipe for disaster. So you get end up with overgrazed parts and other parts that you can't graze at all because you haven't got access to water. So from there we went, decided to put a uh, submersible pump in and a reticulated system and pumping up to a big tank at the top of the property and then a reticulated system. Uh, initially, we put that on a pressure system, so a pressure pump with a big air tank and a uh, float valve on the tank. But that wasn't really successful, not, not the way I really wanted to operate. Um, had, us, had us teething problems. Then I discovered at Agquip you can put, buy one of these, um, not, not expensive at all, systems that will monitor, control the whole setup. So I found it fantastic from two from several points of view one is you don't have to go up to the tank and check it's leveled you can see from your bedroom with what the level is you can set it up next to your bed and so you didn't have to get out of bed if you wanted to um, mine isn't um, you can it'll tell you if there's a if there's a problem if you're losing water quickly an alert will will be on the screen so you can know you've got to go out and find your, your fault if your water level's getting low, you'll, it'll tell you. So it tells you a whole lot of information and controls the whole thing without having to spend much time at all. It must pay for itself, you know, it's about $1,000. It would pay for itself in the first two or three months in saved time. Um, so, so tell us a little bit more about the, the infrastructure itself. So you've got a, a monitor here. What are the sort of components of the system? What is actually up on the, um, the tank and is it on any of the troughs as well? No, so it's, it's actually quite simple. I've got a submersible pump with a uh, electronic controller, a large, I don't know, I've forgotten how big it is now, 40,000 gallon tank, I think it is, and a reticulated water system that does two gardens and a trough on every paddock on the farm. So every paddock now has good, clean water. From the, to, from the electronics point of view, there's a a sensor on the top of the tank which which measures the um, the pressure so that it sits in the bottom of the tank so as the tank fills up the head of the column of water is higher so you get more pressure there therefore that's that has a solar panel on top tiny little solar panel and an aerial and that's about three kilometers as the crow flies from where we're sitting and it sends a signal to my monitor in the house. Um, that tells the monitor how much water is in the tank and then the monitor 
then you set the monitor to tell the pump when you want it to switch on and when you want it to switch off. So I've got it set at switching on at 95% full, switching off at 100%. You can set it whatever you like, down to 10% if you wanted to, but I wouldn't advise it. You can also look at that monitor and it'll tell you the history. You can see a graph of you know, how much water's run down and how much it's going up and how long it takes to fill, all those sort of things. And so there's a controller, electronic controller, airily operated onto the on the pump and that's all there is to it there's just the three components that take about 10 minutes to set up it's literally that simple okay so this is the the front screen at the moment the uh, pumps running you can see the little cog turning I press on that and I can, it tells me it's running I can stop it or start it manually there's also a full-on menu in the part that I use a lot is uh, the history. So that tells me the tank level over the last 30 days. And if there's uh, something wrong, I get a, a warning over on this side of the screen. Sometimes I've just lost signal, or but other times it's losing water quickly and I've got to go and work out what's going on, find the problem. Yeah, so fairly um, fairly cost effective, and and as you said, um, has paid for itself in that short term of just yep. saving that running around and looking and 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 then I guess if you're away away from the farm um, or it's wet, then you can still be able to monitor what's going on without actually having to um, to drive around and bog up the paddocks. Yes, if I have someone here staying, in, if I'm away and someone's staying here, they can easily monitor the that uh, the monitor, monitor the monitor. Um, but you, so they don't have to drive up th the three or four kilometres each way to, to have a look at the tank. They only have to go and look for a problem if there's obviously something wrong. So it gives me great peace of mind because we're away a fair bit. Um, it doesn't go to the next step of where I can remotely monitor it via my uh, my phone or anything like that. That's another level, level of technology that I haven't got. Um, it is possible to do that. You can monitor you know, um, troves, remotely monitor troves or whatever you like to do, but that requires a, a much more detailed level of technology that I haven't bothered with. So um, so during a drought um, in stock are uh, under pressure, you know, pastures are poorer and um, so mm. their actual condition is, is under stress. So I guess if they haven't got good water, um, fresh water that's that's you know, cleaning, that's cycling through, then, you know, that, that further impacts on them. So so how do you, um, what is some of the benefits that you've seen during the dry spell of just having that, that more um, monitored, regulated water system? Well, I'm lucky that the bore here is extremely high quality water. We've tested it and it's actually better quality than Gunnar Town water. So that gives me the starting point of very, very good quality water. Dam water is never as good. Um, it'll never be as good and in a dry time it's much worse and you get the problems of uh, stock getting bogged. So I don't have that problem at all. Um, the, the water, as I said, the water quality is very good. So any, you know, so that's half the, half the, the uh, measure in keeping cattle healthy is you've got good water, you know, the, the other half is feed. It gets dry, the feed quality goes off, but you've still got reasonable quality feed. Um, you know, a lot of people have, have had to destock because they haven't had, the, haven't had the water. You know, that's the ultimate. If you haven't got water, you, you haven't got anything. Yeah, so you've got... Uh um, good water then reticulated to all those to all your paddocks. So you've got that gives you that control over, as you said earlier, where you want the cattle to graze. Yes. So I can move cattle anywhere onto this farm based on what the feed situation is, not on what, whether I've got water. You see, I used to be that case where I couldn't put cattle in a paddock, haven't got enough water or I had to leave them in a paddock because I don't have water anywhere else. That's just a recipe for no good disaster. So this first essential on, on having a well set up farm is 
water where you want it of quality. Um, so yeah, so look, thanks Mark for your time today. It's great to, you've been able to, um, to share some of your thoughts about um, the importance of water quality um, and a good reticulated system. And then also having that managed that you can, um, t- that you can control it um, and aware of where your water is so that uh, it just gives you that peace of mind, um, especially when you are off farm. So uh, look, that complements our, our series of, um, yeah, of, of strategies that we've been covering to um, to help people see what what their you know their neighbours other landholders um, have implemented. It's there's nothing um, scientific um, or hard about some of these um, these different techniques or practices that people have been have applied during the drought. It's just you know keeping it simple, making it fit your enterprise, and um, and and just being able to um, yeah to cope with those drier times.